Oh, wow. Wow. wow, epic. <gasps> Guys, it's a deer clock. Ah! Protect the base. Walter, hit it in its eye with your slingshot. It didn't do anything. Why? Because my damage sucked. No. Wolfgang, do something. My catapults aren't ready. I don't know, guys. I'm still not mighty. I don't know if I can do it. What was that? Gunshot, was huh? That, huh? What's up, guys? It's me, Banjo, the business big, and now also your savior. Here, check out this gun that I found. What is that? That's huge pops come back to life. Why does it have a personalized eye? At least it killed the armed pig. Anyway, won't that kill it? <laughs> Where am I? L lady from Dark? W Woody, that you? There's no hope, Wolfgang. Even if you can, but it's probably too late. Silence! You've used the power of the shadows to overcome hardship before, Wolfgang. Why not use it again? <laughs> I left a gift for you in the physical world. Don't disappoint me. No, oh, my hands are not messed up! Ah! Where did that evil-looking equipment come from? Weaponry. I don't know, guys. I'm still not mighty. I don't know if I can do it. You killed my yeah, like Good job. Yeah. Man, that's wow. crazy. I don't know how I killed that clopsy in one hit. See, this armor and weaponry must be magical. Strange. Perhaps I shouldn't have accepted. Damn, that was a close one. I gotta find some more life giving amulets. Anyway, here, look at my gun. Oh, oh, oops. Oh, no. You shot Walter, you moron. Oh, shoot. Sorry, Walter. Using a gun trigger with hoots is hard. No, no, it's okay, Wilby. Don't cry. You are my little kid now. Goodness gracious, I gotta find some more life. Give me a miniature revival. My cousin, I mean, my friend. Yeah, this is hard. Think about it. Everyone knows that I'm the best. Think about it. Don't let the shadows intimidate you anymore. Fight the darkness? Th them? Hmm. Go. Hey guys, you want to know where I got this gun? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so, so listen, right? There was this portal in the middle of nowhere, and I jumped through it and found myself in the video game Enlisted, where I was taught how to use a gun and a tank and then let loose onto the armies of the world, where I annihilated every enemy that crossed my path with trick shots, 360 no scopes, camping. Uh, yeah, I used every strategy under the sun, but my favorite part was the tanks. With realistic controls and ammunition, armor piercing, infantry piercing, skin piercing, <laughs> with ultra realistic controls. And when I say ultra realistic, I mean hard, like me right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sorry. I know this because when I accidentally drove into a ditch and got the tank stuck, it, it sure did stay stuck for the entire game. Whee! Enlisted has a strong focus on historical accuracy as it is based on World War II with different roles like tank operator tamp tamp operator with different roles like tank operator, inventory, or even just squad mode where you can control lots of different roles of troops at once. The game is available on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. It has cross-platform support and it is free. Simply click my link to download the game and get a free bonus in game, which is uh, free troops and weapons for downloading using uh, my you know my link in the description. So uh, yeah. Thanks to Enlisted for sponsoring the video. We haven't bacon tonight. Yeah, let's go! Woo! It's time for Wolfgang and his new skill tree to fight all the bosses, including the three brand new Aluna mutated bosses. This run will be crunchy and mechanical, doing bosses with methods I haven't used before and in a slightly different order than usual. But Jakey, what's your skill tree loadout for this all boss run? These are the skills I unlocked on Wolfgang's skill tree. First, maximum critical strike chance for faster gathering. Then the coaching whistle to unlock leg day, which grants me 10% movement speed when Wolfgang is in normal form, which of course is just a speed buff, so good for a speed run. <laughs> we unlocked 
all the dumbbell skills for a very specific strategy that you will see later on. Mighty Weapons Tier 4 to buff our planar damage as we will be heavily utilizing planar weapons in the second half of the run. And finally, the Triple Lunar Alignment for 30% more damage against Shadow Aligned enemies. Technically, all the Lunar bosses have a higher health pool than the Shadow bosses, so Shadow Affinity would do more damage, but Lunar Alignment also increases damage versus Shadow creatures, so that's why we chose that, since we'll be fighting Shadow creatures throughout the entire run. Now, we must talk about boss pathing, which bosses to defeat and in what order and when. The ultimate limiter for an all boss run since the last update is now Crystal Deerclops, because you see, to spawn Crystal Deerclops, you must kill normal Deerclops while a Lunar Rift is active. A Lunar Rift becomes active five days after you kill Celestial Champion and give Wagstaff, don't stop. <laughs> The shards that, that, that Celestial Champion drops, I'm gonna re-record that. A Lunar Rift becomes active five days after you kill Celestial Champion and give Wagstaff, don't starve, the shard that Celestial Champion drops. Which means you must kill Celestial Champion before the end of day 30, so that you get a Rift before the end of day 35, which is the end of winter. Then you must spawn and kill Deerclop to allow her to mutate, then defeat Crystal Deerclop. Which sounds simple in theory, but it's incredibly RNG reliant, and I scrapped about five runs trying to attempt the skull. But that's not all, because even if you manage to kill Celestial Champion and Crystal Deerclops in the first winter, you also have to kill Claws before he despawns, as he only spawns in winter, otherwise you have to wait for the second winter anyway to fight Claws. With all that being said, for this run I opted to go for a somewhat traditional route, where we will wait for the second winter to fight Crystal Deerclops, rather than rushing Celestial Champion. We'll save the Celestial Champion rushing route for a duo run with me and someone else perhaps. Hmm. Anyway, let's go! Day 1 is gathering sticks, grass and flint while circling the starter biome until we uncover the mosaic, which is always attached to the starter biome. But before I find the mosaic biome, I- uh, I rage quit. Uh, uh, <laughs> I can't bother. Because me gathering a stack of grass and twigs didn't line up with finding the mosaic. Good grief, Jakey. Come on, we got some gaming to do. And at this point, I do not know it, but this world is insanely good for the run I'm doing. Anyway, after recovering from Gamer Angie, we come back and continue gathering resources, overflowing with grass and twigs until we find the mosaic at the end of day one. Alright, no matter what, I'm not restarting this run. Good choice, live commentary, Jakey. The best character is the one that you have the most fun with. Smiley face. Very base, Jakey. Wow. <laughs> Day two begins, and we have penetrated the mosaic biome. But why, Jakey? Well, the mosaic biome will always have gold rocks, which we need to do the science. After enough mining, we have become mighty to mine rocks in less swings than usual. Walter. And unlocking the ability to critical strike the rocks to destroy them in one hit to increase our gathering speed. Why is it only 97% pure, Walter? Delving into the caves. What? What? What are we getting? Do you? Do you know? Tell me. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Take me to Piggy King, please. What the hell? Sure. Thanks, I'm leaving. Now where are the piggies? Comfy sleeping inside a wormhole? Yeah, it's probably like sleeping in a womb. Huh? Remember this area because we may or may not be making the bass here later. Also, huge, unfathomably large fumble right here. Looking at the map, you can clearly see a forest on the left which will have everything I need. Pigs, spiders, living logs, and mushrooms. Put your slingshot away, Walter. But I go right, not left. No! It's not all bad though, as I suspect Chester is nearby and we have ended up finding Picking, who has a guaranteed high number of pig houses, which we will slaughter and pillage, but not before we do some science in for a backpack and a shovel. This was a mistake. Meow. Hello, meow, meow. Where's cat person television the second? Acquired the pan to and uh, my, my, my inventory is full. Gold shot it. Alchemy time for a hand bat to beat these pigmen with my meat, huh? Also a football helmet so that I don't get beaten by the pigman's meat. Okay, I'll stop. That's a lie, I will. Pre-build the fridge to get rid of the gears in my inventory. Wow, such a cool inventory saving technique. Wow. Oh my goodness, eat up this gang. And utilizing the balls acquired earlier to make a lantern as my main light source for at least a while. Then smooshing the alchemy engine to pre-build it back into the crafting have for later. Meow, 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 meow. Chester acquired. Chester is essential for this run in the early game since I simply need the extra inventory space that Chester provides. Also, you'll notice I'm in normal form and holding the starting dumbbell. This is because while in normal form, I get the 10% speed bonus from leg day skill, and while holding the dumbbell and moving, your mightiness does not drain. So it keeps me in my normal form. Epic. No, Jakey, follow the path. No! I require reeds, which grow in the swamp. For the plant flutes, I will- plant flutes? Pan flutes, I will be using and abusing 
later, along with reeds for a birdcage to make a specific crockpot dish of Polish origin. Swamp Wormwell. Wormwell? Swamp Wormwell. Swamp Wormhole shows us two important things. Firstly, the bee queen biome. But second, oh no, a second deciduous forest biome. This means Claus and his deer can spawn in the mosaic and either of the now two deciduous forests, which means I may have to search this third extra biome. Unlucky. Wow, a free bee flow hat! <laughs> Anyway, connected to the swamp is the oasis, which isn't that important other than finding the vault goats for their horns. But a very good find is the set piece, which has a clockwork knight if you didn't have gears yet. But more importantly, so much marble. We want marble for our marble dumbbell upgrade and for Prowl's future task. But a new strategy for the run, which my Switch chat encouraged me to do, is by heavily utilizing marble suits against bosses. These suits give a massive 95% damage reduction, reducing the amount of healing I need to bring to boss fights significantly. And while Wolfgang is mighty, the normal speed reduction marble suits incur does not apply, so it has no downsides for Wolfgang while mighty. I do want two beefalo fur to craft carpeted flooring for one of Pearl's tasks later, otherwise we're killing beefalo for the meat because our first boss is Dragonfly, and we'll be fighting her soon and we'll probably need healing for the fight because of skill issue. Ooh. Ooh, that's something kind of useful. Finding a lucky fish set piece is neat because now I don't need to craft any of this fishing equipment, which I'll need to spawn a boss called Melbatross later in the run. While in the beefalo savannah, I'll take advantage of the abundance of bunnies, capturing four of them and pre-crafting a Presta Hatatea, which is a tier one magic station. Oh right, there was a forest here the whole time I saw earlier and I ignored it. Oops. I tried telling you, Jakey, good grief. Oh, a pig village. <laughs> this would have solved all my problems. It's funny because I saw this earlier in the run, but I just decided to ignore it. Anyway, the final stage of gathering is getting a stack of monster meat, 40 or so mushrooms, a stack of silk, and filling up on pig house materials, all of which can be acquired from this pig village forest. Although, any forest does work. Is that a terraria for- What the- why is this chest empty? You're, I, what the? I've been scammed. Usually they're gonna have like fireflies and stuff in it. What? I've never seen, seen such an empty Terraria chest in my life. Need the Terraria to spawn the Eye of Terror and the Twins of Terror. Yo, check out all that marble. This is an optional set beach which has plenty of marble for my entire run. Nice. Did I say Dragonfly was our first boss? I lied to you. I'm sorry. I'm not. We want to fight the Twins of Terror in winter, which means we gotta kill the Eye of Terror 15 days before that so the Terraria has enough time to recharge. I'm so bad at the game. Wolfgang's double damage will tear through most bosses, but especially especially this one, as it has such little health to begin with, leading us to killing it in one single night. Nice. The eye mask the boss drops is like a rechargeable football helmet, so we will be utilizing it until I accidentally break it later. Oops. Epic. I do want to kill Shadow Pieces day 21, by the way, because I want a very early few weaver kills so that I can use Void Reaper stuff. That marble piece on the floor is one of three that we need to find, along with the rest of the pieces and the set piece we need to move all the pieces to to fight the Shadow Pieces on the night of day 21, but we'll talk more about it later. Here's a new strategy, which is simply crafting and utilizing the piggy bag, which has more inventory space than the backpack, but reduces your movement speed by 10%. Except Mighty Wolfgang ignores this movement speed reduction, and even if I'm not mighty and I'm in normal form, then my normal form speed burst almost fully negates the movement speed reduction from the piggy bag. So it's just more inventory space without a downside as long as I'm not in wimpy form. A living tree. This gives us three living logs, all of which are essential for the run. <gasps> this is the run! Whoa! <laughs> An incredibly rare set piece includes the walking cane, which grants you 25% speed bonus, and you normally can't acquire that until winter. That's happened in one of my other runs, and I didn't take it, but this time I took it! The walking cane run is here! Woohoo! Also, the set piece spawns in a meteor biome, meaning it could have been destroyed if a meteor hit it, so that's lucky as well. This walking cane doesn't mechanically change the route of the run, but it does allow me to travel faster and dodge bosses more consistently, earlier than I otherwise would be. Wow, a blue gem that I don't have room for. Invol okay, I hadn't jumped through this one yet. This is Moonstone. That is a good, good wormhole. I repeat, good wormhole. Takes me to the Oasis nice. and to the Moonstone. We've got wormhole, sinkhole there, sinkhole there, sinkhole there. Yeah, I think we're just gonna bass in the center. Well, I can get more speed. I think I built my crock pots wrong. Oh well, I don't care. Thanks for the follow! Guys, if you follow the stream, absolutely nothing will happen. Can a bird please land inside of my cage? May the cooking begin! This will be one of the very few times in this run where we'll be cooking healing food. Please, a bird of the bird cage! Please! Uh, but it's okay. Yay! Instead, we will get good and not take too much damage later on. And our marble dumbbell has been created. Sorry. No new hand bat. <laughs> 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 
After forgetting to craft a fresh handbag, it's time to engage the dragonfly. Now, having a walking cane makes getting six or seven hits in before dodging a lot easier and more consistent. I say that, yeah, I am suffering from a severe case of skill issue, resulting in me messing up some, do some dodges and uh, I take hits. Oops. But hey, I haven't fought dragonfly in a while, so that's my excuse. After dealing enough damage, we push dragonfly into her first larvae spawning phase and... Wait, I didn't build any walls to block them! Oh no! Uh, this was on purpose, since Wolfgang deals enough damage to kill the larvae at the same pace as Dragonfly spawning them. Uh, until Dragonfly spawns more than one from a single magma pool. When she does this, we put her to sleep to make sure a third larvae doesn't spawn from that magma pool, and then we can get the number of larvae back under control. Human reactions! Despite me dodging that dragonfly attack while she herself was moving, you're not meant to do that. If dragonfly is moving when she begins her attack animation, she continues moving while performing her attack, which effectively extends her attack range, making it a lot harder to dodge without enough speed bonus, and is why I try to count to 6 or 7 attacks before stepping back a little, letting dragonfly start her attack, then step back a lot to dodge the attack without dragonfly lunging forward. Ah, the game lagged, I swear. Dragonfly as the first big boss helps us a lot because next we're going to the ruins where we will be utilizing the gems that Dragonfly drops to craft some ancient equipment, which is required to complete the run. Wait, did I get max gems? Oh, yo, I got max gems. Nice. Oh. Winking and max gems. Don't question it too much. I'll have to silence you. Do not talk ill about my content or I will delete your comments! So after refilling on food, armor, grabbing my living logs, gems, and any nightmare fuel, we head down into the caves, begin searching for the ruins. Wow, look at all these cahoots. Hiya! Oh, 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 oh. Oops. Oh my goodness, guys. We're gonna miss Glamour. We missed Glamour. <laughs> my child. Come here, my sweet child. Wait. Only have one. Thanks. Any blue j Ah! My goodness. Piggy. Oh yeah, I haven't released a video of Wolfgang doing like wear pig yet. Like I did do it. Hey look, I found the ruins. Okay, I need to listen now. I did do it, but then I never released the video because then the skill tree immediately came out. And I was like, huh. Oh. I have found the ruins. In the ruins is where the lunar alignment will really shine. 30% damage against shadow creatures will allow you to sometimes lay them to rest in one less hit, depending on the weapon you're using. Hold F boys! Hold F. Oh, I've been sniped from across the map. And the lunar alignment applies against all of the nightmare bishops and like nightmare clockworks down there. Anyway, our first target is the ancient guardian, but I can't find him. So uh, our next goal is making a full sight medallion, which will show us on the map where ancient guardian is. Oh wait, I don't have enough full sight. <laughs> I will tear through you, not hungry creatures. I am too strong. And there wasn't any full sight in this entire ruins branch, so I gotta go find a different branch to be able to craft the full sight medallion to find ancient guardian. Good grief, what a mess! Over two minutes later, I find a different ruins branch, unusually far away from the first one, where a little surprise is waiting for us. Finding the resting horror while being insane allows you to bonk him for a nightmare fuel and, more importantly, a replica ruins chair blueprint, so we can easily craft this chair for one of Pearl's tasks later on. Despite us not making the medallion yet, we found Ancient Guardian's maze entrance. Nice! What the hell? Why are we twerking in my chat? What the hell? Trying to make everyone horny. Looting the chest while finding Ancient Guardian can be worth it as they can give gems and full sight. Sorry, I found a green gem. Navigating past the spider webs by walking on the edge of the tile will stop any wow, spiders bad, from spawning. Bad. Wow! But if you took Hutch with you, uh, he would not be a good boy. He will walk through the center of the spider webs, causing spiders to spawn, so uh, leave him behind while you traverse the maze. By the way, this will be no problem because I have a walking cane. <laughs> Finally, we have arrived at Ancient Geordian, who is about to get massacred by Wolfgang's damage. In this fight, Agent Guardian has three attacks in the first phase. His charge attack, where he growls and locks onto you right before charging, you can utilize this lock-on mechanic to charge him into pillars around the arena, which stun him based on how long he was charging for before he hit the pillar. Now, you don't want to keep charging him into these pillars because each time you do, it causes a small earthquake, which clutters the arena, causing rocks to fall and they might hit you. Instead, you should now charge him into the debris that fell during the pillar earthquake. This debris being crashed into stuns Ancient Guardian, same as the pillars, but does not cause an earthquake. His second attack is a jumping attack, which only happens while his charge is off cooldown and you aren't too far away from him. Look at my massive! 
damage. And his third attack is a simple melee bite, which only happens if his charge is on cooldown and you are very close to Agent Guardian. We have entered phase two, where Agent Guardian is now shadow aligned. So my lunar alignment comes in with 30% damage buff, making me deal 149 damage per attack. This phase is the same as the first one, except Agent Guardian has a chance to ooze shadow tentacles onto the ground when you hit him. These shadow tentacles will lay in wait barely visible until you get close, where they will burst forth and deal a potentially run ending 60 damage twice. <gasps> I didn't see that one. I was trying to bait them out, then I was going to run away. These technicals cannot be killed, but do despawn after some time, or after you bait them into attacking, and then you de them. Anyway, Agent Guardian died years ago, and what's in the chest? You saw nothing. I don't think I needed that back. <laughs> I got a lazy explorer anyway. <laughs> Not only did we find a walking cane, but Agent Guardian gave us a lazy explorer anyway, which gives us the same speed burst and allows us to teleport. Epic. Anyway, Agent Guardian drops a bountiful and will allow us to craft basically everything we need without gathering any more resources. Also, Agent Guardian drops a pillar blueprint? We'll be utilizing this pillar structure later, and I'll absolutely not regret that decision. No, no. <gasps> Now I need to trek all the way back out of this branch and to the other branch to get to the full pseudo science station to craft what I need because yeah, there was no crafting stations in this second branch so I couldn't even repair a broken station to do some crafting. The pick slash axe is why I brought a golden axe with me that some of the more eagle-eyed viewers would have picked. Oh. We need this pick slash axe to spawn the nightmare wear pig, and it can only be crafted at a fully repaired pseudo science station. Then we craft a construction amulet. We use that construction amulet to craft two star cooler staffs and a deconstruction staff, cutting the crafting cost in half for all the staffs, so we only need one living log and one gem for each staff instead of two. Then one magic luminescence, a few more construction amulets, and the rest of the full site is spent on armor for the bosses that have the capacity to one-shot me. And we may as well craft our walking cane into a a second laser explorer for more teleports before heading out. You'll notice I'm bringing the orange gems back with me. Usually I don't do this because they have little use on the surface, but I will be plugging various different gems into the Crab King, including orange gems to defeat him, which lowers the amount of purple gems we need, but we'll talk more about that closer to the Crabby King fight. Now, unfortunately, I did not find all the shadow pieces nor the set piece before coming to the ruins, so I want to head back to the surface to ensure that I find all the pieces in time. But if I found all of them already or didn't waste so much time finding the two ruins branches in the wrong order, then I I would take out the Nightmare Wear Pig on my way back to the surface, but we'll save him for the first winter. Anyway, I'm building a couple of chests at the for my important edible materials like pig skin so bats don't eat them and minerals so that more worms don't steal them. And then I stand around doing nothing for almost two minutes before studying the map because it's time to hunt down the shadow pieces before day 21. Okay, where are all the pieces? I think I found Bishop and Knight, this Bishop. And we have a Lazy Explorer and a Magiluminescence to speed around the map super fast, although a Beeflo would also zip around the map fast too, but we'll save that strategy for the Beeflo only boss run that I'll do uh, at some point. Yes, that is very good. We found the set piece, good, good. So yeah, there is a little bit of consistency with this thing spawning in that usually it spawns close-ish to the edge of the map. In this example, it's exactly right on the edge of the map. All right, good. Now we just need to find the rook piece. Creating the frazzle wired from the ruins to pick and gets us enough gold for the entire run. This doesn't happen often, but if you get a hound attack late in your first autumn, you can get fire hounds. So be wary if this happens to you and you're fighting them near the base. Oh goodness. That bishop head is pretty well guarded. Luckily for us, two bishop heads spawned in the world. So we'll go grab the other head instead. Wait, did I just glimpse a rook piece on the map or am I? I think I'm just seeing things. Oh, there is a rook piece. I did see that. Epic. Like, I swear I glimpsed a rook piece somewhere on the screen, but didn't really internalize it. Now that the shadow pieces are in place with time to spare, it's time to start thinking about the boss out of the shadow pieces. Perhaps, uh, Bee Queen? Oh, I didn't find the Mandrake Forest yet. Probably beyond Bee Queen? I don't see it fitting anywhere else. I'm gonna apply some moisturizer to my arms once again. This means preparing some beekeeper hats and some pierogies, but not a lot of pierogies as we'll utilize marble soups, which- uh, soups. Marble suits! This means preparing some beekeeper hats and some pierogies, but not too many pierogies, as we'll be utilizing marble suits which cuts the healing we need down to as little as 5 pierogies for the entire fight. I do want all of the pamphlets I can get my hands on for this run, so as mandrakes are an ingredient to make them, we have to find the mandrake forest and take all of the mandrakes. And finally, mining the marble from the set piece we found earlier, giving us a grand total stack of 33 marble, plus how much we have at the A single marble suit takes 6 marble, so we can make plenty. 
plenty of them. Winter is about to begin, so we're using our first cast of the Star Caller Staff, summoning a star, which will keep us warm while we're near it and lights up most of the base. We managed to craft four pan flutes and we got the natural pan flute from the Glomer statue, so we have five pan flutes to utilize in this run. Last minute silk. Also, if I hadn't got the Walking Cane set piece or the Lazy Explorer drop from Ancient Guardian, then I would be hunting down Mactus at this point in the run to craft a Walking Cane, but we get to skip this step. And finally, cooking up some pierogi and cooking the rest of our green mushrooms so they can increase our sanity when we eat them, as we don't want to be disturbed by nightmare creatures when trying to do the next fight. The shadow pieces. Starting the fight, I step back to allow all of them to spawn, as due to my lunar alignment, I'll be tearing through them with the amount of damage I'm dealing, so I didn't want to kill a piece before the rest had spawned. Surely I'm gonna rip through this night of my lunar affiliation. Yeah! And that's because in this fight, when you kill one of the three types of shadow pieces, the other two types will level up, leaving you with the decision of what order to kill the pieces in. The Shadow Knight moves fast and has a long range hard hitting single target attack. 150 damage per swing! The bishop is slow but teleports on top of you to deal with lots of little bits of damage. Oh, I probably could have killed it if I didn't dodge the rook. And the Shadow Rook also teleports on top of you and deals one big AoE chomp but you can dodge it. Simply so much damage. The bishop and the rook can be dodged whereas the knight is incredibly hard to dodge due to its long range. Oh, the big boy has arrived. So we'll kill that one first in the level 2 bishop, then the level 3 rook. I need a natural path to have enough speed bonus to dodge his attacks consistently, along with my other two forms of speed bonus. Then it's repeating the dodging until we've ripped through his 10,000 health. Not only is this a boss encounter so that we can tick it off the list, but they also drop the Shadow Atrium, which is a required item to spawn the Agent Fueweaver, which we will be killing in spring. <laughs> Killed before the night was even over. Next, we're doing Bee Queen. As we already did the preparation for her before the shadow pieces, I'll be using two to three pan flutes, two marble suits, two beekeeper hats, and a magic luminescence, the lazy explorer with the hand bat we used for the shadow pieces. And only five progies, because we'll be switching between the marble suit and the magic luminescence for a buff in speed and a massive 95% damage reduction. The beekeeper hat only provides 80% damage reduction, but when used in combination with the marble suits, you do get the 95% damage reduction from the marble suits, but the beekeeper hat will take some of the durability loss away from the marble suit, effectively making the marble suits last longer. Except I uh, forgot to take my eye mask off, so um, it broke. Oops. Oh, I'm stupid. I wasn't wearing the beak crown. Well, there goes my eye mask, but it's okay. I didn't really need it. It's okay. We'll be getting a replacement for that helmet soon enough. Starting phase one. We want to face tank Bee Queen and only one of her Grumble Bees, as in this phase, as long as one Grumble Bee is alive, Bee Queen will not spawn anymore. Like, why am I messing up my switches so bad? Phase two begins, and this is where we'll be abusing Pan Fleet the most, as there's no good way of separating Bee Queen from her Grumble Bees in this phase. So put everything to sleep, get a few hits on Bee Queen, and then bonus points if you can put just Bee Queen's Grumble Bees to sleep. Because if you put Bee Queen to sleep, when she wakes up, she always screams, calling her Grumble Bees to also wake up. She's cheating! Can you get away from the war? Like, what's happening? Oh, phase 3 has begun, and this is where it gets a little complicated. Bee Queen will occasionally scream, causing her Grumble Bees to gain increased speed and chase you. We're going to use this against her as a method of separating them from the Bee Queen. By running them a distance away, then counting how long until Bee Queen will stop screaming, causing Grumble Bees to stop moving fast, and then we put them to sleep with the pamphlet. This allows you to get some quality one-on-one -on -one time with the Bee Queen, where you face tank her and do as much damage as possible before the Grumble Bees return. Phase 4 is the exact same as Phase 3, except she screams to make her Grumblebees go faster more often than in Phase 3. Otherwise, yeah, it's, it's, it's the same. Bee Queen is an important boss to kill early on because, no, no, not Bundling Wrap. We're actually never going to use Bundling Wrap to preserve food in this run. Instead, we want the Royal Jelly, which she drops. One Royal Jelly can be turned into three Jelly Beans, each Jelly Bean providing 122 healing per Jelly Bean over two minutes. <gasps> Don't you despawn. Don't you dare. Don't you dare! Getting kind of lucky with those staggers. Sometimes she gets staggered when she's flying away. Sometimes she doesn't. Oh, I don't know, Crypto Mobile Sorry, I screamed. 
die! JG wins again! It's it's absolutely disgusting how much stagger the Grumble Bees give you. It's like actually, actually terrible. And I hate it. Did someone say <coughs> Nightmare Weapon? So after cooking up my royal jelly, I get a bountiful 18 jelly beans, which will provide a grand total healing of 2196, equivalent to about 55 pierogies. <coughs> What's your thoughts on me saying pierogies rather than pierogi already being plural? Yes, very cool. Anyway, we're picking up the pace as we're immediately moving on to our next boss, which will provide us amazing armor for the entire run. The Nightmare Wear Pig. This is why we crafted the pig slash axe, because that tool can be used to crack his pillars into spawning the piggy. Normal and golden pickaxes don't work for this. After freeing the Nightmare Werepig, we can't damage him yet. We have to go insane and kill the Nightmare Rat looking things from trying to subdue him. Though he can still damage you in this phase if you get too close while he's struggling. Now the fight begins. The Nightmare Werepig will menacingly watch you until he decides it's time to attack, where in the first phase he will run towards you and lunge forward with a, hu a hug attack? Sure. It totally looks like a hug. He just wants to give you an ickle wickle cuddle wall. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway, this cuddle will cause death as it deals 75 damage and it knocks you back unless you're wearing marble armor and he moves pretty fast while executing the attack. But since he lunges forward, it's pretty easy to dodge by running toward and then around the side of him. Then you can get some hits in as he stops moving. Yes, sometimes you do this and he'll just turn around and immediately retaliate. So instead, simply bail out three of these cuddle attacks without getting hit and then the werepig will get exhausted, giving an opportunity to get some easy damage in. Oh, why aren't you resting? Wait, why aren't you resting? Do I have to not hit him for him to do the move down? Do I have to like not hit him? Nightmare Weapon counts as a shadow aligned enemy, so I am dealing 30% extra damage throughout the entire fight thanks to my lunar affinity. Alright, punchy time. Phase 2 has begun. In this phase, Nightmare Weapon will regenerate health rapidly while not attacking or being attacked and has only one attack, which is continuously punching the ground in front of you uh, if you get too close. This punch has a massive wind-up and it leaves a crater on the floor when the punch lands. Oh, Dreadstone, please don't fall into the void. I'll be so incredibly sad. He also lunges forward a lot when he does this punch, such that if you want to deal damage to him, you have to stay very oh, close to okay. or inside the speed-reducing crater that it leaves. This punch is the only way to break the pillars that once restrained the Nightmare Epic, and once they are punched, they get destroyed, leaving Dreadstone, which is used to make the armor that we want, along with another perp slave for turning on hard mode, don't starve, but we'll talk more about that later. His hitbox is so far forward when he punches, because he like goes into the crater. Where are you hiding? Oh, you're over there. Like a real predator. Yeah, there's no really way to bait the punch such that he, his hitbox isn't just like sent all the way forward inside of his own, own crater. Why didn't you get hit? Woo! Oh, he he tries to get a certain distance away before he returns back. Okay, I don't know why he's huffing. Anyway, that fight's over. Yeehaw! The work Craig drops a few blueprints, two for dreadstone armor pieces and one for a dreadstone pillar, which we won't be utilizing at all. Whoa, we did it! Sorry, I was distracted because of the slow. And some pure horror, which is like extra evil nightmare fuel. I will end you. Do not test me. Combine this with dreadstone and you can make dreadstone armor, which is, uh, surprise, surprise, the armor that we want. But first, we're heading back to do a quick visit to the ruins to get a very special crafting station, the Shadow Craft Plinth Kit, which can only be crafted at a full pseudoscience station with some of the materials that I just got from the Nightmare Epic. Ultra speed run tactic. If you don't want to stop to have to warm up, jelly beans are almost enough to mitigate freezing damage for a short while until you get back to the this kit will allow us to place a crafting structure at our base which makes powerful shadow armor and weapons, but we do not have the ingredients for that yet, so this station is for a lot later. Using a construction amulet, we craft ourselves our dreadstone helmet. Construction amulet, of course, makes the helmet cost half the ingredients it normally needs, and the helmet itself is crazy good. First off, it gives 90% damage reduction and plus 5 planar defense, but we don't need it for that yet. It has 840 durability, but has an effect, being that when its durability is not 100%, it will drain your sanity to 
to repair itself. This self-repair isn't enough to face tank like every combat scenario, so you still need to dodge, but it means we don't need any other armor as long as this armor has enough durability. Time to search for claws and his deer, but I'm running low on hunger and my fridge is empty. So we'll search the mosaic biome first and kill some tool birds for meat and eggies while we're there. Schedule. Uh, sorry. Egg. Ooh. No, Chester. <gasps> wow! We luckily found the suspicious boulder which contains the celestial orb on day 25. Pretty lucky. We need this to spawn celestial champion later, but for now, little Chester will keep it safe for me. Oh wow, there's two of you. Time to begin scanning. After searching the mosaic and the extra deciduous biome, no claws. But then we enter the pig king forest and we find claws as set. There he is. Oh, I have so much speed that it doesn't really matter. Let's go! <laughs> Using the deer antler on the sack attracts claws' attention and he's ready to fight. This fight can be done pretty easily with no healing as long as you have speed burst. The basic pattern of the fight is dodge two sets of claws' melee attacks while hitting him in between those attacks, then dodge a fire, ice deer, magic attack, and then repeat. It will become apparent that having a clear area to fight claws is practical as objects get in the way of both mine and Claes' deer's position, which can interrupt the fight along with flammables being set on flyer, flyer, fire from the fire deer, which again disrupts the fight. When Claes initiates the fire deer attack, you can stay in front of him to get lots of hits in as it takes a while for the fire spell to land. Whereas the ice deer magic attack spawns ice under you much sooner into the cast than the fire deer, meaning you dodge first, then hit Claes second. Why did you do attacks? You should have called in Krampus. Halfway through phase one, Claws will fall to his knees and call in two Krampus per player. And since there's only me, just two spawn. After dispatching these two, the fight continues until phase two. and becomes unchained, revealing the gaping maw in his stomach, which unlocks a new attack where Claws pounces towards you, which you can dodge at the very last second with enough speed burst, otherwise you need to preemptively run away to dodge it. In this particular phase 2, a stupid crawling horror is chasing me, which is disrupted because it moves so slowly it never gets in front of Claws and always stays on top of him. Jump! Cooling hearts are the worst in this fight, because they're just so slow. Not a very clean fight, but that's alright because our armor will regenerate any durability lost. Now we can use the correct antler, which is Claws' antler, that he drops to unlock the claw sack for four presents. Oh goody! Let's open these shirt. Wow, nothing. Wow, nothing. Wow, nothing. Wow, it's useless! So, next stop, the goats. If I recall, this wormhole goes there, which is insane. This is such a good map. Can we just take a second to appreciate how amazing this map is? So here's the thing about vault goats. They drop the vault go horn, which I need for weather pains, but in this run, I never even craft a weather pain. That's right, a painless run? <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry. So I only really need one to two horns to craft morning stars when fighting wet enemies as it deals electric damage. But hey ho, anyway, aggro and goats is usually hard because they run away from you. But if you throw a dumbbell just in front of the goat, the air of effect will hit the goat, getting its aggro. Killing five goats from one herd and none of them dropped any horns, what the? So I went hammering bones for bone shards and stumbled across a second vulgar herd who gave me three horns, which is more than enough. That might be enough for the whole run. Is that a Terraria reference? Usually the twins can be a mess as they move fast, deal heavy damage, and there's two of them, duh. But for maximum speed, we're gonna continuously be uh, putting them to sleep using the pamphlets. <laughs> then getting in damage and then putting them to sleep again. Oh, I thought he screams when he wakes up. This will eat through most of my remaining pamphlet uses, but it speeds up the twin fight significantly as you don't need to do any dodging. But the night was short-lived, so we didn't have enough time to dispatch either twin. While we wait for the next night, we'll make use of the time by preparing some materials and gathering more grass and twigs, as I did not plant any grass at my base to save time, and instead opted to gather it in, it in the downtime during the run. Let's 
stream. We finish off the blue twin, and there's enough time the knight to also take the life from the red twin. Good! Oh my goodness, Chester. Good, I hope you die harder next time. Since when can you back to back dash? The twins never used to be able to do the back to back uh, action of what the other twins' main thing was. Absolutely rolled over. Okay, well, Chester died, so I have to go back and grab my piggyback. Happy farming music. These twins drop a shield of terror, which is a rechargeable weapon with okay damage being 51, but most importantly, some ruins gems, which will be handy for later. We are farming because we need specifically a singular potato, and since it's winter, wild seeds will have the highest chance of being a farm prop, which likes to grow in winter, such as a potato. We also need a pumpkin for a lot later too. Man, I just, I sure hope I get pumpkins so that I don't have to waste 10 days waiting for one later in the run. That would be crazy. Walter. We'll build an ice flinger max so no disastrous fires happen in summer, so we must mine some ice in winter. We'll need ice for an ice flinger max later, and having ice for filler for crockpot dishes is always nice. Clomps. Just gotta do some humble wood cutting while we wait. Clompsy will have his way with you. Because she is a big, strong woman. There she is. But she's angry at the tree guard. Now the spiders are angry at dear Clomps. Having that tree guard spawn while getting some was pretty lucky. And those six living logs will come in very handy for the run, making us dark so Terrible. I, I had the opportunity to dodge one attack and I didn't do it. Goodness gracious. The dear Clomps has been taken out. But now it is time for an early moonstone event. Day 31? The goodness gracious, that's early. We need to transform a Starcaller staff into a Mooncaller staff to get the gem from the Mooncaller staff. So let's get it now. I usually use fossils to block the moonstone from being attacked by the werepigs and the hounds that spawn, and I usually do this event on day 51, but that is simply too slow. So we're using a method I saw from Amishlari, who used a wardrobe and some walls to manipulate the pathing of the creatures into running into the wardrobe, keeping them away from the moonstone. But as I learned, this strategy, it isn't flawless. Please. Oh, please. Oh no, that werepig might get through. Oh, it's okay. He came from that angle where it can work sometimes. One got through! If they come for an extremely specific angle, they can get to it and attack it. Okay, it should be fine. I'm just gonna sit here just in case though. Control F? No, we not control F because then we'll be attacking wolves. And if I attack that pig, he'll come for me. And that could dislodge him from the water. Ooh, it worked! Nice! Despite one getting through, it did end up working. Very good. No hold F, no no. Finding some nitrate so we can use one of the vault goat horns to craft a morning star. This weapon does more damage than their dark sword as long as the enemy you're fighting is wet. Otherwise, it's a pretty bad weapon. And its durability is unique because it's based on how long you wear it, not how many hits you do with it, which will be very useful. Did I say five pamphlets for the run was enough? I lied. We're deconstructing a low percent pamphlet to then recraft it to get the full uses again. Also, crafting the eyebrella using the Deacopter's eyeball and the bone shard to be collected for the required 100% rain protection for spring, which is coming up soon. Jakey, why are you making fire staffs? Well, we won't be using weather panes in this run, so we're gonna fight Toadstool without weather panes. Oh, he's not here. I'm so sad. Insane during this fight. He is here. Okay. I will go insane during this fight, though. Oh my goodness, there's spiders everywhere. Also, since it's winter, it is very cold. So cold that if anything is wet, it won't naturally dry off. And it just so happens that it rained in the caves at some point, and now everything is wet, including Toadstool, and will stay wet until spring. Oh. <laughs> ah, that's a first. Second tenant filler. Oh, Flint. Flint delivery. Yay. Oh, interesting. You have to crit it out of that state to be able to do damage to it. See? Starting the fight, I'm doing an absurd 144 damage per hit with the Morningstar versus Wet Toadstool. 
I forgot the in-game music. Toastal's attacks are pretty basic and he doesn't try to directly hit you uh, yet. Instead, he throws out boom shrooms, which after landing grow four times on the fourth growth threshold, the mushroom explodes, dealing heavy damage, which I will be dodging. His second attack is the spore bombs, where Toastal sneezes and targets you with the bomb, and after three and a half seconds, it detonates, causing a cloud to spawn on top of you, which will spoil anything inside of its area at an accelerated rate, even if those things are in your inventory or being worn. That's why I built a chest at the start of the fight to store all of my perishables. These spore bombs last for a while so you want to let them detonate a distance away from where the fight is happening to not clog up the arena. Or at least that's what I would normally do but in this method we're using we will be having the arena clogged full of spore bombs because Toaster will also spawn mushroom trees which buff him the more of them there are, buffing his movement speed, attack rate and damage reduction. This means you need to get rid of them otherwise you'd have to try to beat through 99% damage reduction? No no. So as he starts spawning the trees we'll begin setting the trees on fire with the fire staff. These trees burn for a long time so once Toaster is done spawning them, they still count as active, so Toadstool will have increased movement speed. We'll utilize this to pull Toadstool to the opposite side of the arena from all the trees and get him stuck behind a pond, then we put him to sleep until the mush trees have uh, collapsed from being burnt. This is just truly beautiful though. This is actually beautiful. In this arena, two of the ponds weren't very good as there were other parts of the environment stopping Toadstool from getting stuck, but it's okay. Normally you wouldn't want to burn the trees Toadstool spawns as they leave a long lasting spore cloud once they collapse from being burnt. Even have time to take care of the shadow creatures. <laughs> this method is so beautiful! But as long as we drag Toastal away from the trees, then we don't need to deal with the consequences of burning down the trees. <gasps> Ooh, okay, I thought he wasn't wet for a second there because I wasn't doing damage because his, his, his trees are up. Then once the trees all fall down, you get a massive damage window when Toastal tries to get back to the center of the arena. This strategy was told to me by Camp for Pumpernickel in my Twitch chat. Thanks, gamer. This strategy is great because it's so cheap while also giving you downtime to take care of nightmare creatures, so you don't need to collect any sanity food before the fight. Next round of trees will be fun. When I say fun, I mean not fun, because I've truly littered the arena. This one should despawn soon. Look at that perfect look. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. During the last phase, Toadstool unlocks his final attack, the Jumping Slam Attack. Toadstool will jump, dealing two rounds of air effect damage, which typically sync up with a round of boom shrooms exploding, causing huge damage if you don't dodge. If that wasn't bad enough, it also causes a short-lived earthquake, so debris falls from the ceiling, and it could hit you, damaging you, and more importantly, staggering you. Can I just beat through it? Might be able to beat through it. Oh, I put ce celebra celebratory pan flute. Definitely not a missed flick. And also there's a blue gem. Goodbye, fire staff. It's day 35. It just started raining, so I think fuel weaver is a very safe bet, or am I wrong? Once we get back to the surface, one of our seeds grew into a potato. Nice. We don't need the potato yet, and we don't want it to spoil, so we're going to turn it back into a potato seed by feeding it to a bird, and then we'll replant the seed closer to the time we need it. A few times like accident. Wait, I'm gonna tear through Fuel Weaver. I have Lunar Alignment. I forgot. What the hell? Players. Goodbye. You served me well, Morning Star, but I am now replacing you uh, with another Morning Star. Wow. Good. Oh! Time to throw. No, no. Oh! Zipping through here with uh, mag is so nice. You just don't get hit, I, except I just got hit. <laughs> Oops, doesn't matter. I'm going too fast. I didn't grab the agent key. Hold on, pause, go back. Time waste, I didn't grab the agent key. Beep, beep. Hello, Hutch. Goodbye, Hutch. The ancient fuel weaver fight, but without weather pains. No weather pains means when the fuel weaver spawns healers in phase two, we want to position him on the outside of the arena to reduce the likelihood of a healer reaching him before we can dispatch the healers. It's already getting heavy. Where's my, oh, there it is. I was like, where's my other lazy explorer? All right, let's go. The fight begins by giving the shallow heart to the skeleton and the ancient fuel weaver is reanimated. It is raining and everything is wet, which is good and bad. Good because I can use my morning star for huge damage, but bad because I am also getting wet, which means I'll have to occasionally switch into my umbrella for rain protection, leaving me vulnerable with no head armor. Phase 1 has 3 attacks, a melee swipe attack, a bone summon from the ceiling, and a bone snare. 
Oh, I'm terrible at the game. We'll be avoiding all the attacks and teleporting out of the bone snare with the laser explorer. Once Weaver is close to 10,000 health, I lead him to the outside of the arena, then drop his health below 10,000 to now start phase two. Where Furia will now summon Shadow Hands that make him invincible. He cannot take damage and pushes you back if you try to hit him while these Shadow Hands are active. I must go insane using the Nightmare Amulet to be able to see and attack these Shadow Hands to dispel Ancient Fuel Weaver's barrier. He also has an Insanity Stun ability where if your sanity is too low, Fuel Weaver will take over your mind, which leaves you in a stun state for a few seconds, which can be just devastating as Fuel Weaver could hit you in this time or heal in this time. So we must keep our sanity up using the Beeping Crown, which inverts Fuel Weaver's insanity aura and we have cooked cactus as backup sanity healing. Now that all the healers are dead and we have dispelled his barrier, it's time to make the most of this small damage window. We'll put on the marble armor and the beacon crown to face tank fuel over while jelly beans keep our health topped up with their passive healing effect. summons the second round of hands and healers. All of these healers will slowly crawl toward Fuweaver, and once they're close enough, Fuweaver will bend down and eat them, healing him for 400 health per healer. We simply cannot let him heal a lot, as it will extend the fight too much, leading us to running out of resources. This is why we lured Fuweaver to the edge of the arena, to get the maximum distance between him and his healers, so we can kill them one by one before they get to Fuweaver. He does 5 damage to my jelly My queen! Oh! Oh! My queen! Please notice me! Please! <gasps> she waved at me! <sighs> what have I done? Alright, sorry. No horny. What have you done, Jakey? You just activated the rifts in the caves? This makes various aspects of the game deadlier while in the caves. Also unlocking new enemies to defeat for materials to make armor and weapons, which we will be doing, but not quite yet. Marvel and Jelly Beans is. Oh, not to bunnies, not today. I've not come this far just to die to bunnies. No, no, no. <gasps> I don't have a lightning rod. Wow! Bats, you're gonna have to go away. Okay, so like, what now? So I can, I'm gonna kill one moose goose and that's it, just to kill the boss. Eat progies. Yum, 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 yum. That, getting the dreadstone helmet that early was actually huge though. Back on the surface, we are five days deep into spring and we're gonna head to the sea for a few reasons. One, Pearl. We must find Pearl and start doing her tasks so we can acquire Pearl's Pearl, which is needed to defeat Crab King. Okay, I don't know where Pearl is. Uh, I haven't found a bottle as of yet, but I guess we'll head in the direction of Luna Island, which is over there. Oh, hey, look, a wormhole that takes us to the uh, to the edge. Two, there is another boss on the ocean which we must find and defeat called Malbatross that I mentioned earlier, who is very RNG reliant whether she will spawn or not. Driftwood don't mind if I do. And lastly, Luna Island. We need to find Luna Island eventually, but if you don't find it now, it's not a big deal, as later on we'll be pointed in the direction of it. Mighty Wolfgang also does row faster than not Mighty Wolfgang, so combining that and finding a driftwood piece to make a driftwood ore means we are zooming on the ocean. Well, that's the Luna Island ticked off the list. Crit. I'm so good at the game. While we're here, we'll mine out the Luna altar pieces so we don't have to do that later. And with Mighty Wolf getting strength, we'll find a triangle of lights and plug the altars into one of the three points of the triangle, and then skedaddle onto the next task. Alright, Chester, it's time to find a bottle, please. Wow, is that a bottle? Wow, it's not too far away. What the hell? Decent RNG? What is this garbage? And surely the monkey island is not in this corner of the map. If I get interrupted by monkeys, I will s s s cream. 
Uh, please take note of the S's I said before the word. Thank you. Pearl, I've traveled far and wide, my queen. I'm so incredibly lonely. Hello, my queen. Your king has arrived. Remember that chair blueprint we got in the ruins? This is what it was for. Once you build the ruins chair on Pearl's Island, she says get good idiot and gives you a blueprint for a structure which allows you to craft different furniture pieces, including a nice wooden chair, which after crafting on Pearl's Island will grant you a friendship point, aka a task. We need 10 friendship points from Pearl before she will give us her Pearl. Chester, it's time to leave. Wow, oh, assault formation. Wow, oh, I one hit them. Amazing. Uh Wow, big shoal. Oh, I have enough. Would you look at that? Another message in a bottle. Please come home. I miss you so much. No. Shark! Chester, watch out! Oh, goodness, it's hot on our tail. Row faster, Wolfgang. Oh, goodness. Chester, kill! I hit it with the trick with the oar. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Chase it down. You don't get away by killing hitting Chester like that. Oh, goodness. Where's Malpatros? Wait, but like, what? Why am? Why is Malpatros destroying my life? Maxed out my credit cards. It doesn't say hello. Da 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 da. That's not a show. They spawn naturally. Da 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 da. It heard my call. Would you believe that I've never had a singing lesson? Wow. Yes, Jake. Yes, I would. Wow. Yay! Potentially, she might not spawn. Yep, nearly three days or 24 minutes of sailing just to locate Malpatros. Gross. Remember the fishing rod equipment we found at the start of the run? We're finally using it. Unfortunately, the lure we found works best during the evening and it's daytime, so it still works, just not quite as well as if it was evening. That's why the fish are not grabbing the bait straight away. Anyway, every time we hook a deep bass, which are these fish from a deep bass spawner, we will have a chance to spawn Malpatros. Oh. Oh. Whoa! Malbatros, I'm your biggest fan! I placed an anchor because Malbatros' attacks can launch your boat away from her, stopping you from attacking, but an anchor will mitigate this almost completely. Queen! Wait, no, come back. Goodness gracious. Can I finish this fight before I die of insanity? I could have been using the boat a lot better. Oh my god, she's getting destroyed! Oh my goodness! Holy smokes! Why is she not running away? Woo! I love in armor. You should come back. Don't kill Chester though, I'll be sad if you kill Chester. Whoa! Wait, what are you doing? Come back. Yeah, I'm too Okay, that wasn't that bad. Oh my goodness, Marble Draws Bill. Nice! Wow, I love blue gems. Ting! Right, lads, let's, let's get. Why am I cold? Oh, umbrella, yes. Joey Bween! I'm sorry, I'll never do that again. That's a lie. Uh oh, Captain, we're going to. Actually, perfect. Wow, like a glove. Save mummy milkers. Well, I guess I just said it. Well, well. Yeah, I'll just go straight back to her and get. Oh, I punched Mr. Mike Man, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, there was a map. Are you serious? Look at that, look at that, look at that map. Look at that, look at that map. Uh, uh. There was a Malvatross spawner right next to the seesaw formations. I could have immediately found Malvatross. Ah. I'm so sad. Ow. Did you see this chair or no? She looks slightly happy, this is good, wow. Can't wait for Jiggy's wife to leave him, cat person. Well, actually, uh, cat person broke my heart by telling uh, his stream and I was there that he had a wife, and I was like, what the hell? It's okay, she doesn't know about us. Maybe the wives will leave us for each other. <coughs> I'd marry him just for the voice alone. What the? You'd get sick of it real fast. Oh wait, you're talking about cat person. <laughs> what the? All right, I need to kill a moose goose. Children. It is time for death.
Death children time for Chester to have his dinner. Oh no, they're chasing. The, okay, we're going to be killing lots of children today. The Moose Goose is a very basic boss, which only boss boss which only has two attacks: a melee attack which you can dodge, and a honk attack which makes you drop your equipped weapon. So the typical pattern is dodge three melee attacks while getting two to four hits in, depending on your speed burst. Then keep attacking until she honks, and then you must pick up your weapon after she does her honking attack, and then repeat. But if you fight her too far away from her nest, then she will de-aggro you, causing some abnormal behavior in her attack patterns. Now the children. Children's only attack is they run towards you and once close enough they spin in your direction in a straight line while attracting lightning. After they're done spinning, they're vulnerable for some time, as in they're just stunned. But in this instance, we have an abnormally large quantity of children babies following the mama goose, so we must battle 10 babies at once. Since we don't need weather pains, we only really killed the moose goose to take it off the boss list, but we may as well use the feathers to craft the luxury fan to keep us cool at summer. What is this run about, your mom? Sorry. <laughs> Wake's long. Oh my goodness, it broke. Oh yeah. There's lots of those. Oh my goodness. B A L L S. What the? Oh yes, okay, is that epic? Sorry, Chester. The weaker left behind. Oh, Pro, what the hell? What are you. Pro, why? Yo, this is kind of weird. Why is she just chilling outside? Pro, are you okay? Goodness gracious. No, no, you're not allowed back in your house. I'm building. Oh, no. Uh, premium. It looks nice. Ow! Quiet. It is time for the music. Wow, what a banging tune. Besides, you two have to wait. Alright, Pearl. Your final task has been done. Whoa! Now it's on. Finally, we have acquired the Pearl, so now we have the ability to fight Crab King. But we don't know where he is. So we must deconstruct the Moon Cooler staff we created earlier to get the iridescent gem. Let's take this gem to the archive in the caves. Oh no! I forgot! Acid Rain! Oh no, I forgot. I need to kill the Ink White Trio at some point. Acid Rain? Since when is that a thing? Well, ever since I turned on the Nightmare Rifts by giving Charlie, my queen, five Dreadstone, we unlocked basically uh, hard mode caves, which includes Acid Rain happening in the caves, which degrades anything on your head slot super fast while accelerating the spoilage of anything in your inventory. And it slowly saps your health. So the umbrella will protect you from the acid rain, but the acid rain tears through the durability so fast. So instead, I opted to wear the dreadstone helmet, which repairs itself over time, so the degradation isn't a big deal. Acid rain just uh, melts you, basically. Did I not find the blue mushroom biome? Surely it's like right there. See that? I reckon that's it. After, all right, I'm gonna jelly bean now. Oh. Now where could respawn over here? Cool, I'm not killing you again then. That is a lie. I will be killing him again, just not right now. So right, surely the blue mushroom forest is like here, right? Like surely. I'm so good at the game. Like I'm so good at the game. I didn't actually know, but I made a good guess. And like I'm just so good at the game. I like I just knew. so the toadstool was there, but there was a there was a technical pillar, so that means it's an actual muddy biome, not just toadstools. And opposite of the the ancient guardian. <laughs> Is uh, that, yeah, epic. Wow, thanks for sharing, Jake. Very cool. A 12 full site for later, as I used up all the full site I got from the ruins. Good thing the archives has these statues that give you one full site and one moon rock. So we'll plow through a few of them for the required moonstone and full site. Oh my goodness, the dripping. Oh my goodness, the dripping. All right, shut up. You're all terrible. We must listen to the sounds of the nightmare creatures coming to life. Oh, goodness gracious. Leave me alone. Right, this time I have good armor, so I won't die to a centipede. I hate these centipedes. In a previous run, I got terrorized by these things. Here, take a little look. Hello, um, small warning that, um, the next little bit is gonna be, uh, loud. Oh my goodness. Die, stupid centipede! You're so annoying! Stop running away! I'll kill everything! Why is it alive again? I'm gonna kill everything. Oh my goodness! If I die to the centipede, kill it! <gasps> I'm so scared. Dude, dude, what's happening? Let me out. Let me out. Let me Why can't character? Why are you moving? <laughs> Good grief, Jakey. Shut up. Anyway, unlocking the hidden knowledge, we acquire a blueprint for the astral detector, which once on the surface will point us toward all the lunar altars, starting with Lunar Island's altars, except we already mined the Lunar Island altars. Wow, we did it. I'm too good. 
Okay, hold on. Does Dreadstone count as like a, a a bad no no nightmare gear so the Gestalts will hit me or like no? That's how much damage they do. <gasps> oh! Uh, it just did 16 damage to me through 90% damage reduction. Wow, 160 damage, no fit. Oh goodness, not again, please. Oh wait, I need to get Glomer. Glomer! Oh my goodness, it's time for Glomer! Glom Glom acquired. So it will next point toward the hidden lunar pieces on the mainland. Then finally it will point toward the Krabby King who holds the final lunar altar. Planting the potato seed now so it grows before we need it. I want it to grow so I'm putting star colors down. Now where's Crab King? Hopefully not near monkeys. Oh my, oh my goodness. <laughs> to make Crab King attackable, you must slot nine gems into him. The first being Prowl's Prowl because without that, he doesn't drop the Lunar Altar that we need. The last eight gems to slot into him can be any gems, but typically people plug in eight Prowl Gems since the Prowl Gems buff the amount of geysers Crab King summons, but usually you cancel that attack by freezing Crab King. But with our strategy, we will be cancelling every single one of Crab King's mechanics, so we can use any gems except red and blue, because red buffs his health so we'd need more uh, items, and blue buffs Crab King's freeze radius, but more importantly, his freeze resistance. So we'd need to hit him more to freeze him. So anything except these two gems work, and I guess you can't use an iridescent gem either, as that cancels one of every type of gem. The strategy for this fight is dumb, uh, but it works and it's very cheap. It's just, uh, keep throwing ice dumbbells at Crab King. It has a bit more depth than that, so let me explain. When Crab King tries to summon his very first round of claws, he will dive under the surface before summoning them. So before he finishes this animation, we just freeze him with the dumbbells while also dealing damage. It takes three thrown ice dumbbells to freeze Crab King, so you must throw three at a time before uh, resetting. But here's the catch. Crab King will only perform an animation to summon his claws the first time he summons them. So if you mess up the timing and don't freeze him in time, he summons his claws and the fight is over because you can't deal with them. So let's see how it goes. <gasps> no! Oh my goodness. The equip lag really did me dirty there. And I just didn't equip it for so long. Like right there. Oh cool, none of them hit. Did you see that? I threw three dumbbells and none of them hit the Crab King? That's a bug which can be devastating, as if one or two of the dumbbells hit, then Crab King would get unfrozen and would not get frozen again, allowing him to get his claw summoned through. So let's hope that doesn't happen, right? Again! No! Okay, the fight's actually over. Do you see that bug? Do you see that? Okay, the fight's over. Epic. There's no way it actually happened. Two of my dumbbells didn't hit Crab King, while the third one did, unfreezing him and allowing him enough time to summon his claws. This is devastating as we have lost this entire kill. Ultimately, all this means is we have to leave, make more ice dumbbells, come back, pick up all the gems that I socketed in the Crab King, as he would have spat them out and become non-targetable, and then we have to try again. Dang. So that bug's never happened to me whenever I attack Crab King from the south or north, but this time I attacked him from the... Wait, yeah, I attacked him from the side. So I'm gonna just hope that it's because I attacked him from the side and not from the south or north. Correct. This bug seemingly only happens if you attack Crab King from the side. Whereas if you attack from the north or south, seemingly this doesn't happen. But let's find out as we're about to start our second attempt. Here comes the poor summon. Looking good for now. That time around, attacking from below, Crab King didn't invoke the bug, so that's noteworthy. And there it is, in the depths of the ocean, the Lunar Altar, which we must grab with the Pinch and Winch and haul back to the surface. Also, note how I didn't pick up all the gems that I socketed in the Crab King, which uh, I thought I didn't need, but um, I'll regret that later. Oops. I'm pretty sure we don't need any of the gems, but... <gasps> no, I didn't roll that way! What? Wha but like we all saw that I rode this way and it just like went right oh, I'm so sad Let's take all three of these lunar old pieces to the lunar island and begin the celestial champion spawning sequence Please work. I'll be so sad if it doesn't Wrong! 
now it's night time, so it's cooler. Full speed ahead! Goodbye, Bo. It is summer, if you hadn't noticed, so we'll put down our phlegmatic now to keep the base safe from full fires. Now, it's time to make some butterfly nets, a watering can, and head into the Moonstorm, where we will find... And he will give us a few blueprints, at which point I realize I forgot to grab the moon glass on Prowl's Island needed for the recipe for the Astrogles. Oops. Oh wait, I need a moon glass for the Astrogles. Oops. Without the Astrogles, it's basically impossible to see in the Loon Storm, and you move extremely slowly. Using the potato we grew and the moon glass, we make the Astrogles. Then the pain begins, as I must capture moon gleams with butterfly nets, mine infused moon shards, and give Wagstaff tools to finish the experiment, all while defending him from birds which can attack the experiment. Oh my goodness! Oh good, you're doing it in the swamp. And if the experiment takes too much damage, it fails. And you must start again. And I need to repeat this three times. And my astrogals durably drain while I use them. So either I need to get hit by a moon gleam, which recharges them, or I have to repair them with a sewing kit. Yes, hurry up. Come on, come on, come on. And this is why we built the watering can. My Twitch chat showed me this method of staying cool in summer, where you water your thermal stone by lighting something on fire under the thermal stone, and then the hold right click to water it, to put out the fire, and then you keep uh, watering the thermal stone. Each Every time you water the thermal stone, it reduces its temperature, so you can reduce it to a really low temperature and then pick it back up to keep you cool. Nice. This is a bit better than the eyebrella and luxury fan combo at the moment because I need my head slot for the astrals right now. Wagstaff, why do you have to start the experiment next to a bunch of houndmans? This wasn't gonna work out. And now you're standing right next to Dragonfly? Wagstaff is out to get me and sabotage this run. Anyway, three Moonstorm events later, we have all the materials we need to spawn the Celestial Champion. So let's grab our weapons and armor and head out. The Celestial Tronchian Phase 1 is rather simple and easy to not get hit. Uh, despite that, I, I will still get hit because I'm um, a skill issue. The first attack is a rolling attack where Celestial Champion will walk towards you and begin rolling. During this roll, it can change direction, so you gotta be on your toes. More speed bonus helps here, of course. Second attack is a ground slamming attack where Celestial Champion will slam the floor a variable amount of times before stopping. And lastly, it has a defensive stance. If it takes a certain amount of damage in a short time, it curls into a ball reducing damage taken and spawns a bunch of small gestalt, which, if they hit you will make you drowsy and put you to sleep, allowing Celestial Champion to potentially get a free hit on you. Oh goodness, the wrath of the salad bed. I did bring my Dreadstone Helmet, but since we have no sanity on Luna Island, we have Lunacy, it will not regenerate. That is why I brought the Full Sight Crowns as backup. Celestial Champion Phase 2 begins with his Merm Blender 5000 spinning attack, where it initiates a spin matching your speed and chases after you for a variable amount of time. Its next attack is a Gestalt Summon, where it will slam the floor three times each time causing damage if you're too close, while summoning a line of greater Gestalt each time that accelerate in towards your direction. You can squeeze between these Gestalts, but it's easy to just go around Celestial Champion in a circle, as the greater Gestalts do heavy damage if they hit you. Celestial Champion's Wall Summon attack starts by plunging its leg into the ground, causing damage if you're too close, and shortly after, spawning walls of shards trapping you in along with dealing damage if you're on top of where they spawn. Usually this attack is followed up with a spinning attack, so you need to get a clean line of sight away from Celestial Champion, otherwise you'll get stuck against the walls. And finally, Celestial Champion has a basic melee slap which can be easily dodged.
final phase. The most deadly phase. The main danger in this phase are the two laser attacks. Each attack fires out two sets of three lasers back to back in one of two directions. Though no matter the direction, you can avoid all lasers by moving diagonally away relative to Celestial Champion. The other main attack which causes pain is when Celestial Champion summons a bunch of moon glass pillars which will activate causing an aura of grogginess around them making you fall asleep if you stand too close for too long. Luckily, you can use Celestial Champion's lasers to destroy these pillars, otherwise the pillars aren't active all of the time, and break after some time. Phase 3 also has a basic melee attack which is very easy to predict. If you're too close, it will plunge into the ground dealing two instances of physical damage. I forgot to bring bone armor and I'm so doing so bad. And lastly, the blue circle attack where Celestial Champion plunges into the floor like a melee attack, except it will spawn greater gestalts and smaller gestalts, targeting every player inside the blue circle around Celestial Champion, causing you to take damage and get put to sleep. Fortunately, when you're soloing, this is the easiest attack to avoid. Simply run directly away from Celestial Champion until you're outside the blue circle, which will cause Celestial Champion to stop the attack as there is no one left to target. It's so bright I'm dying. Bone Armor is particularly good against Celestial Champion Phase 3, but um, I forgot to bring it. Oops, let's see how the rest of the fight goes. Hello Wagstaff, here have this shard, I sure hope this doesn't cause anything bad to happen. Smiley face. <laughs> Since we defeated the moon, it requires some time to rest, so now we must deal with a full day of darkness while moving on to the next target, goats, because I'm hungry. Otherwise, we'll be using the astrals to tackle the sandstorm in the oasis to find Antline because we didn't kill Antline yet. We must feed our cold thermal stone to Antline to get the fight started, but this should be easy. With the astrals granting us our normal movement speed, it's super easy to dodge the spike of Antline's summons, and I deal so much damage that the fight is over before Antline can start attacking really fast. Easy. Next, we're heading down to the caves to fight the Nightmare Webhead again because I want more Dreadstone and pure horror for the Dreadstone body armor for a boss that we're going to kill after the Nightmare Web Pick. Since we've already shown this fight, we're going to skip through it, but here, look at this. An earthquake happened during the boss fight, and boulders are now falling from the ceiling due to the shadow rifts being enabled. Goodness gracious! The Nightmare Web Pick will destroy these boulders if he swipes at them, which is good, because otherwise we could get stuck on them. The Dreadstone Body Armor has been acquired. Now, these armor pieces not only provide 90% damage reduction, but also have a set effect. While wearing both pieces, they both regenerate durability faster. Cool. But here's the other effect that we want. Each Dreadstone armor piece provides 10% damage reduction from shadow enemies. This stacks multiplicatively with its normal damage reduction. Two pieces will provide 19% damage reduction. This includes both physical and planar damage. Wait, what's planar damage? Uh, okay, listen, I'm not explaining the deep mechanics of planar damage and defense in this video because it will take too long. So you can watch my Wolfgang Guide section where I talk about planar damage, which is important because next is a planar entity boss, which we have never defeated in a video before, the Ink Blight Trio. Okay, technically, they're not a boss, but more like a mini boss because they have a small amount of health, but they definitely have the damage potential to rival a normal boss. And that's because this trio are planar entities, like I said, so part of their damage is planar, and they reduce all the physical damage dealt to them. But first, we must find them. So since we activated the Shadow Rifts in the caves by giving Dreadstone to my queen, sometime after that the Ink Bite Trio have the ability to spawn, and once they can spawn, they will spawn whenever a player gets close to a Nightmare Fissure. The Nightmare Fissure that usually spawns Shadow Creatures during the Nightmare Phase. After getting too close to a Fissure, it will form a Dreadstone outcrop, some Miasma Smoke, and the Ink Bite Trio will arrive. There it is. <laughs> These enemies might be recognizable, and that's because they're totally based on the Shadow Pieces design, but with different attacks. Uh, the Bishop-like Ink Blight throws Shadow Blobs at you, the Knight-looking Ink Blight will cartwheel towards you hitting you multiple times, and the deadliest Ink Blight, the Rook-like Ink Blight. This thing has two attacks, which are both devastating. Firstly, he can pound the ground if you're too close, dealing 200 rapid damage, and the attack which I avoided during this entire fight, so I'll have to show you in a test world, where he jumps towards you, and if you don't get out of the way, he eats you, chews you up, and spits you out, dealing 240 total damage if you don't have any armor. Even if you have a football helmet, you will be dealt 144 damage due to half of the damage being planar damage, so it ignores your football helmet's damage reduction. Crazy high damage. So the fight itself, I choose to get rid of the cartwheeling ink bite first, as it's annoyingly disruptive with its attacks. Secondly, the rook ink bite since it deals so much damage, and lastly, the bishop ink bite, because it's very easy to avoid its attacks throughout the entire fight. All the ink bites deal planar and physical damage, and take less physical damage due to being planar entities, like I said. Despite this, they all die pretty fast, 
because Wolfgang is pretty strong. Look, before we take out the last ink blight, let's mine the dreadstone outcrop for extra dreadstone. If you were to kill the last ink blight before mining the outcrop, the outcrop would just despawn so you lose any dreadstone that you could have gotten. It's funny, they, they really are glass cannons. They die pretty easily, but my goodness, they do so much damage. Mine the outcrop. I didn't bring a torch, so I'm gonna dodge attack and go in there. Yeah. I don't even need the dreadstone, but. It despawns if you kill them first, and then. Yeah, if you kill them first, then the. Yeah, like that, the outcrop just despawns. Anyway, why did we kill the Ink Bite Trio? Well, they drop Pure Horror and the Shadow Cloth, which are both used to make the new Void Armor and Void Shadow Reaper, which both provide planar defense and deal partial planar damage. We want the entire set, but we don't have enough materials to craft everything I want, so we could wait for the Ink Bite Trio to respawn again, but I'm impatient, so let's go back to the ruins to kill. Guess which boss? Can't stun him once he Ooh, a green gem, would you look at that? That's right, Ancient Guardian. Because with the green gems I got from twins and not the green gems from Crab King that I didn't pick up, oops. We'll be using them to craft more construction amulets and deconstruction staffs to duplicate materials to craft the void equipment. Agent hey, Guardian, I simply- oh. I was gonna say, I simply moved too fast when I ran back into his melee range. And since we killed Fury, that Agent Guardian would have respawned, and Agent Guardian has some pretty great drops. Look at that damage! Include the chance at green gems. Say that you like their videos. That's very nice. Thank you. I'm glad you like them. Wow, a full mag. Yes, please. Ow! And we ended up getting green gems and full sight. Perfect. Two branches very far apart. Oh yeah! JT, you fool! That wrestling horror after you've activated the nightmare wrist will drop a pure horror, which is the material you're trying to duplicate, and you didn't pick it up. Idiot. And now we, wait, we should, now it's calm time, because it's autumn, right guys, it's time for calm. Finally, it's time to craft the big bad, void robe. Kill the void robe. All right, let's dupe this another time and see if we have enough now. Really fancy in your here. One robe, one cowl, one scythe. And the umbrella costs. Whoa, the umbrella is expensive. Let's make that. So yeah, now we just make some repair kits. These repair kits are the only way to repair the void equipment. Also, this gear is now my best DPS equipment, regardless of the enemy that I'm fighting. Ho ho ho! Yes! Oh my goodness, my tail, it points out. Yes! Wow, umbrella! Wow! Watch this, ready? Bwong. Uh, listen, watch what. Bwong. Wow. Oh, you're right. Guys, watch this. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Ah, I'm so good at the game. Bwong. I should probably take this time to explain what the Void Equipment does exactly. So the Void Reaper is a weapon which deals 38 physical and 18 power damage per hit, and has a special effect where you can harvest things with the Reaper, like grass and twigs, which is cool. Also, harvesting grass this way doesn't spawn grass kills. With Wolfgang, his double damage is only applied to the physical damage, so he deals 76 physical damage while Mighty with 18 power damage. Except, I currently have a level 4 Mighty Weapon skill, which adds an extra 20 power damage, so 76 physical and 38 power damage for 114 total damage, uh, except it gets a bit more complicated depending on the enemy that you're fighting, but let's ignore that. The body armor provides 80% physical damage reduction with plus 10 planar damage reduction. So if you get hit for 100 physical and 15 planar damage, the armor will reduce the physical to 20 and the planar to 5. Simple. It also has a special effect which makes you immune to all insanity auras. Very powerful. The helmet is the same physical and planar reduction as the body piece, but has a different special effect. This effect is, when using the Shadow Reaper and the helm together, you will deal more damage with the Reaper for each additional hit you land on an enemy without getting hit. This caps out at a 5 hit streak, granting full extra power damage per hit in your hit streak. And lastly, the Umbrella, which is 100% rain protection, protects you from acid rain, and can be deployed on the floor to protect an area from rain and a future weather effect that we will see later. This ancient gear on some tool birds. 
Um, my inventory is full. I will simply leave that egg on the floor. It'll, actually, it'll get destroyed by meteors, so... Alright, keep your eyes open for dirt piles, boys. We must find the dirt piles. It's time to spawn a Vark. Might even build myself a toadstool mush light. With the enlightened crown shard that I don't have. So, no, I'm not going to. <laughs> In new bird, my old one perished. <laughs> I like all the gear we've got. It looks so funny. It's not that funny. I just think it's funny because it's like all the high-end gear. Wow, high-end gear! Whoa, is that a suspicious dirt pile with a hound tooth in it? I'm going to follow it because I am foolish Wolfgang. At this point in the run, we have four bosses left. The last will be Crystal Deerclops, who we can only spawn earliest on day 91. So we have lots of time to kill until then. So what if we uh, kill Toastal again? Except the misery version. To spawn the harder misery version of Toastal, we need a canary. And to get a canary, we need to build a scarecrow, which requires a pumpkin. So we're farming for a pumpkin, except I haven't collected any seeds since I grew the potato I needed. So uh, I need to wait for birds to spawn to drop seeds. Since our Lunar Rift is active somewhere in the rod and I haven't killed a possessed Varg yet, any hunt will be a dangerous hunt, which will end with the Varg. Regardless of if there's a Lunar Rift active, if you complete a hunt fast enough and it ends in a Varg, there will be a Koalifant Corpse, which is very useful for keeping the hounds distracted while you kill. The Varg. There it is. Normal Varg has two attacks a simple bite and a howl to pull in hounds. Uh, the Lunar Rift is active, that's why it was uh, two. Oh, here it comes! Uh oh! Uh oh! Here we go, boys. Jelly Bean. He starts with his frost breath off cooldown. Here we go. Oh, frost breath. The possessed Varg has three attacks. A bite attack which deals physical and power damage, the same howl as the normal Varg, and a frost breath attack which can deal a devastating amount of damage if you don't dodge it, while also giving you an opportunity to stun the possessed Varg if you hit it with power damage while it's spewing out the frozen flames. Oh, I forgot it would be off cooldown again. Bit of a waste, but it's okay. Spiders, help! Yeah, the hounds are pretty distracted now. Goodness gracious. Oh, nice. The spider baited out the frost bin. As you can see, it's very messy. It would have been less messy if I just held that. Oh, and now Verger's coming. <laughs> I hear Verger. Bonus boss before Verger's wants Spider Queen. I hear all of you sometimes saying you want to see Spider Queen, so here you go. The biggest concern with Spider Queen is the horde of spiders she can spawn, which you got to keep on top of. Otherwise, her melee attack has an abnormally long range, but uh, otherwise, very easy boss. Wow, we killed Spider Queen, wow! I heard you spawn. There's no hiding- yeah, we killed the bug. There's no hiding from me, Bulgear. Oh, there he is. Oh, my backpack. He's chasing for my jelly beans. Beardra is quite the simple fight, and is only made complicated with shadow creatures. But ignoring that, Beardra starts with an air effect slam attack, which you must step back to dodge, then attack Beardra, and when it begins swiping, shift around Beardra by like 45 to 90 degrees-ish, and continue hitting. Repeat this a total of three times, then dodge the slam attack again. And just keep repeating that. Or you can use Beardra to knock down trees to spawn tree guards to kill Beardra for you. That was a promise. Oh 
good this Oh goodness Oh no full care has arrived And he's angry I don't know it yet but my sanity being too low will almost get me killed during this fight as Berger is the most dangerous mutated leader the boss in my opinion at the moment Biggest <laughs> damage is ridiculous. Armored Berger. She has the same attack pattern as normal Berger for the most part, except she deals power damage along with physical damage. And when she swipes, she lunges forward during the swipe, extending her range. Once you've dealt enough damage to Armored Berger and you run behind her, she will do a butt slam attack. If you hit her with power damage before she gets up from this butt slam attack, she will be stunned. This will happen throughout the fight every time you deal more than 800 damage to Armored Berger after she finishes being stunned. The flying butt slam, please no! If you've dealt enough damage for Berger to do the butt slam attack, but you run too far away, Berger will run after you and do the flying butt slam. It's hard to stay close because of this darn shadow creature, but let's see how the rest of the fight goes. He's gonna, if I go too far away, he's gonna flying butt slam, that's why I'm just staying quite close. Can this shadow creature just go away from the legs? Also, Berger will continuously slash at you if after her last slash you are still within range and she's still targeting you. So, um, yeah, combo. The frame is damaged, ridiculous. <laughs> Sorry, Borgir. Uh, that fight would have been not complicated at all if I wasn't insane, by the way. And I was I was being very careful to stay close to Berger that entire time. Because if I got caught up in a flying butt slam flurry, I'll call it. That would have not been good at all. Thank you, Wagstaff. Very cool. So now we uh now we gotta wait for Deerclops. So boys, what do we do? What well, <laughs> Look at said. I am not getting Warbus gear. It's not good, garbage, poo poo bad. Warbus armor isn't bad, but it requires about 20 days of finding Wagstaff machines to get everything you need to make them, at which point the run will be over. So you can watch my last video to learn more about the Warbus armor, but we will not be getting it in this run. And hope that you don't die. What song is this? Exclamation mark song. I built these fishing trawlers for Pearl's tasks, but I ended up not needing them, so these trawlers just catch ocean fish passively. What am I looking for? Looking for the moon glass. Oh, here it is. Oh, perfect. There's only three. And this requires a stack of rocks. Wow, look at that. It's so cool. Oh, hounds. Hmm. Hopefully their fire doesn't set off my hostile flares. I mean, the pillars. I'm sure that's why I built the structure. No work, Seth. I'm not following you. Since we decided to kill Mizu Toadstool, I'd like to use a different method to kill him rather than using the same one again with fire staffs. So we're gonna go for the very basic method of chopping down Toadstool's trees manually. But we can cut them down faster with Mighty Wolfgang, who takes less swings to, cu uh, to, to cut them down, and his critical hit skill will sometimes knock the trees down instantly. On top of all that, we'll be using Moonglass axes, which are more powerful than normal axes. Oh, there's the Lunar Portal. It's over by. It's over there. Wow. We should we go check it out? Sure, why not? Ooh, woo, what's this? Oh, I don't have my pick slash axe. Um, you can crit these though, so we can try that. Let's go! Oh, huge crit. I'm too good at the game. Oh, there's too many of these things. Slam! A little bit more. Yes! Alright, Luna hail time. Alright, that's all we can do with the portal so far. Uh-oh, stuff is happening. Oh, bright shades have happened. Goodness gracious. We saw bright shades actually come out of the portal. They should disappear off screen and go to my base. Where are we going, buddy? He zoomed over in that direction. Okay, we got one here. Then this other one went over here. Let's follow this guy. Oh, he's gonna go there. Okay, we only got two. The bright shades will infest plants in your world and prioritize plants you or any other player has planted themselves. Chester, no! So you can watch Latinish Monsters video to learn more about how they target plants, but to kill them, you gotta take out their vine to make them vulnerable, then you can damage the main body of the plant. These things aren't much of a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize you could one rotate them, but I guess as fast as possible. 
Alright, 20, 20 moon rock. The free another. Suck it that. Oh, I made a burger. Nice. A veggie burger. I don't know how I managed that. That in there with some of that. Oh. Oh, we you did it. Wow. Alright, cool. Um, so now we do this really cool thing where we just make this. And then we just. Oh, goodbye, Chester. I'm leaving. So you can't change it mid run, but that made it look like that again. Alright, so we're gonna go Shadow Affinity. Max planner. So before we ha we were only fourth planner. We switched into shadow mutation shadow because uh, we're only fighting mutated deerclops next. I guess this would have been nice against Toadstool if I could fight shadow creatures, uh, which would have been nice. But I guess I could switch again. The, the main thing is I want these crits and I want max planner damage. For Toadstool though, shadow creature killing shadow creatures is nice. So we'll just do that. Then otherwise we'll just do speed and stuff. So we'll do that. Then then we, we, before we call in crystal deerclops, I'll turn on the shadow affinity for maximum damage. Okay, that's good. How much nightmare fuel? do we have will it fit in my inventory let's see oh goodness it did just about we have uh, how many stacks one two three four nearly five stacks all right how do we get seeds because uh, like usually it's merm king but we don't have merm king i guess i can try to make a bird hat three black two reds two technical spots since we're still waiting for seeds and therefore birds to fight mystery toadstool i decided i'll make a bird hat i mean a feather hat which makes more birds spawn in which in turn gets us more seeds oh no the gestalts mess you up so bad what the Resets, it's like a, it's attack thing. And, wow, a tentacle trap, hell yeah. Yeah, feather hat acquired. Also, I'm just gonna plant these pretty close together. This is why, ladies and gentlemen, this is why you collect your seeds. Where are all the seeds? So many Toma roots. Oh, hello, we have guests. Oh no, my plants. Chester, no. I'm unfortunately still Luna aligned, so I won't be able to slaughter you quite as easily. Me and my tail will take you out regardless. Oh, I'm stupid. Wait, oh, I have all three vines hitting me. It's so funny that you can two hit them. Because normally after two hits, the, uh, the the vines retract and you can't hit them anymore. Also, it's really funny that you were targeting Chester because you just gave me a free kill. Idiot. No wag staff, I'm not getting your science experiment. Oh. <gasps> Pumpkin! Nice. Alright, let me go to the caves. Oh, here it is. Yes. Here he comes. Come get me. A shadow rift. From this rift, a little shadow rat thing can spawn, which is as tanky as hell. Then he leaves a bomb behind. So that's an aggro animation. Do you jump? Like, wh what's your attacks? Why aren't you attacking me? All right. Oh, <gasps> that's so much pure horror. What the? And then that thing you can't kill. It just follows you and explodes. Oh no, it makes more? Okay, never mind. Okay, four pure horror is huge. That's all I need. Right, this should transform immediately. Uh, I guess they spawned somewhere else as I walked past a fissure. That's a shame. I tried spawning the ink white trio again, but they didn't want to spawn. They may have spawned somewhere else without me noticing, so I'm not entirely sure, but oh well. <laughs> oh, more friends. Hello, guests. You've infiltrated my pumpkins. No one attacks my pumpkins. Onion. This should be enough repair kits for the entirety of the run, including the almost 100,000 health misery toadstool. Now let's switch our skill tree for the final time, getting ourselves the shadow alignment for more damage against lunar enemies. And of course, level 5 mighty weapons giving us more planar damage. This will be the happiest pumpkin in the constant. Okay, pumpkin. Scarecrow acquired. Jakey wins again. Hello, Canary. Time to get poisoned. Goodbye. I guess I can grab some bulls. Well, it sometimes crashes the server, sometimes not too often. Finally, poison. Good. Now we leave. Goodbye. So the pillar stops, theoretically stops rocks from falling on me in the area around the pillar. So it makes it so that every time it causes an earthquake, Rocks don't interrupt the fight, hopefully, maybe. Alrighty, let's begin the Misery Toadstool fight by dropping the Poison Canary, letting it pop, and bam! Toadstool is now sad and will be the Misery version. This version has 99,999 health, 
and otherwise is mostly the same as regular Tilstool, except he hits a little harder, can spawn more boom shrooms, and toward the end of the fight, he stomps a little more often than regular Tilstool, I believe. And like I said before, we're getting rid of the trees by chopping them manually with Moonglass axes. Combining that with Wolfgang's mightiness, it only takes four swings to knock one down, unless I get a critical strike, which knocks it down instantly. I'm also utilizing the bone armor to tank the boom shroom attack so I can do more damage since I don't have to dodge. This is especially powerful with the Void Cowl and Reaper, since I can keep my hit streak for extra damage. Anyway, let's skip ahead a few thousand health. We have Notch Total into the phase where he stomps to cause an earthquake. Look, the killer stops it completely, so I never need to worry about falling rocks. Although, there is something else I should be worried about. Oh, did the surf just crash? What? Really? How? I'm guessing that's a bug with the pillar. I think a normal earthquake and a toadstool earthquake happened. So that's actually a game crash caused by the game. Wow. So, um, uh, yeah, it seems that if a natural and total earthquake happen at the same time with a pillar active, the game just crashes. So, uh, I'm pretty sure total always despawns once you join back because the server loads before you do. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Tuzzle will be sitting here waiting with 12,000 health. Surely. Surely he'll be sat there with 12,000 health and we'll, we're going to resume the fight exactly what- Let's go, buddy! It's time to restart the fight! Actually, no, I'm rolling back. I was gonna do the fight again, but I, I don't think I have enough Moonglass Axes. Also, the day count will just keep getting deeper into winter, which I don't like. I rolled back to before the fight started, and I started again. Except this time, without placing the pillar, so the game doesn't crash. Well... What's up guys? We just we just got ourselves a poisoned canary. I'm just gonna make my way to Toadstool for the very first time. I'm so excited for this fight for the very first time. Goodness gracious, make sure the feathers don't get in the way. Alright, let's let's kill Toadstool for the first time. Whoa! Misery! That's a lot of health! I sure hope my game doesn't crash halfway through the fight. Sorry, 90% through the fight. It's time to end your misery. Your reign of misery, dolls. Do I, I missed. Gosh, all right, we got him. Whoa! Nappy sack. Yum, yum, yum. Now it is time to L E. Wow, now it's just mutated deer clomps left. Wow, 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 wow. Oh, the portal is closed. We were farming for a pumpkin for so long that by the time we got back to the surface, our last wave of Sprite Shade spawned, and then the Lunar Rift closed. So despite it being winter, if we killed Deerclops now, she would not mutate into Crystal Deerclops, since the Lunar Rift is closed. This means more waiting. But we will do some searching, because when a Rift does spawn, it doesn't appear on the map until it grows big. So as long as we find a small Rift, we're okay to kill Deerclops. Oh, we found the machines. Well, I guess we have to do this now. Go on then, give me the Warbis armor blueprint. Well, that's a shame. Give me the Wabasama blueprint. No, well, give me the Wabasama blueprint. Well, that's a shame. Hey, look, I found claws. But first, let's kill claws again. Why not? But with better equipment than last time. Uh, I'm just gonna use the cowl. Cowl and mag. Oh, I'm terrible at the game. Yo! When you kite claws, it's like enough to uh, keep the streak. Like, it takes. It's such a short kite that it's enough to keep the streak. That's amazing. Oh, I love you, Ken! Yeah, you tear through every boss now. This is amazing. Oh, I'm bad at the game. You can, like, while you're dodging claws, you can keep up the streak. It's so good. There's enough of a gap between his attacks to keep the streak up. Just. Oh, I lost the streak there. Should, should have probably tagged him to keep the streak there, but it's fine. Keeping the streak is just another another level of depth of the Shadow Reaper. Kill the evil deers! You cannot defeat me. I am Wolfgang and I'm way too strong with the Shadow Reaper. I will tear through your flesh with my Shadow Reaper. Ah! Hey, you look like Raven from T Teen Titans. Thanks, man. I've always aspired to look like Raven from Teen Titans. Wow, what do we get? Wow! 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 Okay, so now I think we start searching for the stuff. Yes, wow, I love searching for stuff. This is where the other one went. Oh! Ooh, 
family fight. Yippee! Woo! So theoretically, by Rob's calculations, it would have spawned. Oh, Luna Hale has started. Okay, the portal is active. I repeat, the portal is active. We can go ahead and spawn Deerclops now. Ow. Umbrella, go. Wait, where's Umbrella? Chester, you have the Umbrella. Umbrella, go! Wong. I am safe. Deerclops, look at this juicy pillar I have for you. Isn't it? Wow, isn't that just so attractive and young? Okay, I don't know where it went. Whatever, I don't care. Oh, it did call in Deerclops. Destroy the pillar, Deerclops. Good, Deerclops. Oh, I'm not mighty. I've made a mistake. To dodge Deerclops, you can run directly away, but the actual hitbox of Deerclops' attacks are around her feet and in the direction she attacks. And it is actually exactly where the ice spawns, spawn, and the damage hits you as the ice spawns. spawns. Deerclops, let's go over this way a little bit, okay? This way, just a, just a smidge. Oh my goodness, there's so many trees, I can't see anything. Wow, there's a path here, amazing. Now, we're finding a clear area to fight Crystal Deerclops right after normal Deerclops. Since we do not want any obstacles while we're fighting Crystal Deerclops. Wow, a Deerclops eyeball, yummy! I sure hope nothing infests this Deerclops. What happened to Cube with gaming? Uh-oh. Uh-oh! Quick, get some damage in before it grows the ice flooring. I do so much damage still, that's insane. I didn't have my imagery sword. Look how much damage I do! Shadow Affinity, woo! And all shadow gear. I'm gonna only need one stun, this is insane. I'm insane at the game. I'm actually insane at the game. I'm insane at the game. I only phased him once. I'm insane at the game. I'm just so good! Since we've killed all three mutated bosses, Wagstaff will give us a spark arc. Wagstaff, hand it over. I don't think I got hit either, except for the frost. We'll use this very soon, but what if uh, we just killed another crystal Deerclops? I hear things. Oh, hello! There is no escape from Wolfgang. Get back it! Oh, I did get another Deerclops. Wow! Hello, Deerclops. Where's my mag? Chester, what did you do with my mag? Uh-oh, Spaghetti-o. Alright, can we phase him like last time? No, ice hounds interrupting. Eat the Deerclops eyeball, just don't attack me. Deerclops, kill them! <laughs> do the range attacks. I want to show the method where you do the range. You bait out the range attacks, and then you get the damage in. Clumps. All right, hand over the second spark arc lad. Why are you so small? Wow! We get a second spark arc. Since the first spark arc is acquired after killing each mutated boss the first time, then after that you get a second spark arc for each different mutated boss you kill. But you don't get a spark arc from killing a duplicate before killing the rest of the bosses. Anyway, into the caves. Haha. -ha. I win. And I need more moon glass to build the bright smithy so that I can finally craft the rewards from killing the mutated bosses. The Howlitzer. Hold on, I'm cold. The Howlitzer. And crystallizer. No, no, no crystallizer. Only polar bear dribbin. Yeah, I didn't even use bundling wrap to try to preserve food in this run, which is kind of funny. Just go straight for the polar bear dribbin. That's amazing. Hell yeah, just put my stuff in the polar bear dribbin. I win. Howlitzer. Guys, I can't wait to use my amazing Howlitzer weapon. Oh, just need, let me just grab all my hound's teeth. Uh, oh. Um. Oh, I wasted one. Oh, I only have one shot left. I better make it a count. Target acquired. Nice. 
And now we cannot use the howlitzer. No more hound's teeth. No, no. <laughs> For use a howlitzer, like, you really do need to have a very long-term world to keep getting enough hound's teeth to actually use it. Or you use a varg farm, but that'll be the next video, so it's fine. Howlitzer still isn't affected by this, but yeah, otherwise, polar bear dripping. Wow. Alright, what can we make? We can make bright shade gear. I don't have enough pure brilliance. Bright shade staff is probably good. If you, if I didn't have the the void stuff, it, like okay, so in this instance, I have all the void stuff. So you don't really care about the bright shade weapon and armor unless you want the the helmet specifically because it negates the sandstorm in the oasis and it negates the miasma, I believe, in the caves. And it does something else. As, oh, and it it takes you through the moonstorm without astro goals, which is very nice because it's armor and you can see through the moonstorm, I believe. All right, well, that's the run. We kind of did everything. As you can see, we were extremely fast in the first part of the run, um, but then it like, then you have lots of time to waste because you have to wait for deer clubs. That's why when we do a duo, we're gonna do Cecil Champion first because then it's a lot more fast paced and you will be waiting for Berger once again. All right, anyway, good job, Wolfgang. Bad Chester. Very good. Anyway, so that's where I got my gun from. Oh, there's Deer Club! Oh, that was a close one. I nearly, he nearly got me. <laughs> Good thing I played it listed and got this gun for free. I clicked the link in the description. Hell yeah. Nice. Good job, keepers. <laughs> that was in the script! Goodness gracious. Wolfgang, are you okay? No, Benedict, we're not done. Stop killing people. <laughs> okay, are you okay? No. <laughs> Walter! <laughs> Why are you laughing at Walter? Revive Walter. My queen, we have been double-crossed. Wolfgang used our own power and your gift for his own benefit, but ultimately decided to side with them. What do we do now? It is unfortunate, Wilson. I am disappointed in him. But it's not much of a setback. We have plenty more pawns to pick from. 